Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to this A10 Mini Extreme video series. Today we're going to take a look at the multi-view options in the A10 Mini Extreme. As a quick refresher, or if you're new to the A10 Mini lineup, just head to the bottom corner of the A10 software control where you can go to the settings, multi-view tab, and in here you can configure your multi-view. One of the first decisions you can make is how many windows to show at the same time. So you can go for a four, or you can subdivide each of those four areas into another four. Let's take a look at that. Here in this view control area, you can click on each of these to switch between one or four little windows in the same area. So for example, you could change it so there's only four windows altogether shown on the multi-view, or you can subdivide all four of these and turn it into a 16 split on the multi-view. And right next to that, you can decide if you want audio meters for all of your sources, or you can individually turn those off if you prefer to see only some of them. By default, the A10 Mini Extreme seems to ship with this 13 window view, which uh, shows the program on the top right, and then your sources down the left, and a few other nice things below the program. But let's take a quick run through a few other options that I think are really useful to know. Each of the windows have a menu option, so you can decide between all of your sources that come in, colors, media players, and you can also choose things like what's on output one or output two, program or preview. Those are the options for the bigger windows, but for the smaller windows, there are a few other options too. In here, I can choose recording status, streaming status, and my audio status as well, which is really nice to have. And I think it's a bit of a shame that you can't choose those options for your bigger windows too. So I'd love to add a massive audio meter just so I can see what's going on, or maybe even the streaming status really big on my multi-view and take up four windows, just so I know what my audience is seeing. And don't forget, in the label section here, you can actually change these if you want it to be something else. For example, instead of camera one, you could say main cam or my laptop source down here instead. But I think I'll leave them as they are for now. That's a quick tour of the interface itself. But here are a few multi-view options that I really like to use in certain circumstances. What I might consider as a more classic approach is preview on the top left and program on the top right. So if I just change that in the software control here, I'll just change this top left to one big square and set it to preview. It already did that by default and I can choose to turn on and off the little guides. In this case, I might want to go through all of these uh, bottom ones here and change them to my camera one, camera two, camera three and camera four. And now on my multi-view, I can really see my four main sources, a few other things off to the side, and then when I'm in preview and program, I know what's there. So when I'm cutting back and forth, I know what's gonna to go to program and what's queued up on preview. This is my sort of preferred way to use the ATEM in general when I'm live and whenever I'm making videos, because then I know what I'm gonna to show to the audience before I show it. And this is a nice multi-view layout to really achieve that look. Another setup I quite like is more of a monitoring mode setup where I really wanna show all the statuses right on the screen so I can definitely see what's happening and what the audience is seeing. So in here, I can just change this into a four split again on the top left so I can see my four main camera sources, for example. And I always wanna keep my program somewhere, so I'll keep that on the top right. And then down here, I already have my recording status, my streaming status, but I think I'll show my audio status too. So I definitely have that somewhere so I can see or I can see what the audience can hear. And then beside that, I like to also put what's on output number two. So in this case, I'm showing the multi-view on output number two. And then I know what I'm sending off to somebody somewhere else, maybe in the building or into a recorder here on site. And then above that, I can make sure I have my camera one, two, three, four. I could go for camera five and six as well if I have those attached. So let's add those now. And then I do use the media player one and two quite a lot these days. So I'll keep those over on the side. And uh, I tend to use this running up into a show just to make sure I know what everyone can see, what everyone can hear, and if I'm recording or not, and if I'm streaming or not. And again, this is a perfect place where it would be really nice to have nice big windows for the audio status or especially the streaming status. So I could really catch at the corner of my eye if the multi-view is right below the camera I can be sure that I'm gonna see if the cache starts filling up or something like that. One more direction to head in with the multi-view layout is more of a simplified approach. So in this case, I want to really simplify things and I'll change everything to like a four up window display. And you can see here, I'll keep program on the top uh, right hand side. So I definitely have it there. But in my case, I want to put camera number three uh, up here. Actually, let's do number two, the one who's talking and then Below that, I'll put um, my media player two, which is where that slide is coming from. 
and then on the bottom right, I will keep that super source layout. So now with this super simplified multi view, I could probably hand this over to a volunteer or a helper, and they only see what they really need to see. So in this case, whenever they show this super source on program, that's what it looks like, the presenter with their slides. And then perhaps I can cut to the presenter by themselves. And they always know what's on the top right is what the audience is seeing. And with that sort of workflow, it really simplifies the output and they're not getting distracted by maybe some audio meters bouncing over here or other things that they shouldn't really be worried about just to simplify things and make their job just a little bit easier. Now, one thing to keep in mind and one thing that's a bit of a shame is that even though there's two HDMI outputs on the ATEM Mini Extreme and they both can be set to multi-view, they both will be the same multi-view layout. Now, it would be really nice if you could set two different multi-views. For example, my last use case there, we have a simplified multi-view for one person and then a slightly more complex one for another person. But that's not currently possible in the ATEM Mini Extreme. But maybe that's a feature that they could add. Who knows? But it would be really nice to have that. Something else I'm starting to play with a little bit is Companion and the controlling of multi-view sources through Companion. It's still something that's in the early days since the ATEM Mini Extreme is so new. But um, in Companion, you're able to configure the multi-view windows and it's something I'm excited to play with whenever it's been figured out and worked on a little bit more and then released in an official version. Well, I hope you found that useful. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. And if you know any other cool things you can do with the multi-view, then also let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.